Well, hi there. If you've seen our video on six of the best pet monitors, you're probably familiar with the Argus monitor. <laughs> you probably also know that I have never been so afraid for my immediate safety as I was when that giant Argus monitor turned to me in anger. I've sat behind a table with a rattlesnake, a gaboon viper, an alligator, a Nile monitor, a king cobra, <laughs> and a grumpy caiman. And this was still the scariest moment. That Argus monitor was a large breeder male. He's a wonderful lizard, but he hadn't been socialized at all. And for this reason, I am with you today with one of the best trained and most famous Argus monitors in the world, Raptor. Raptor belongs to our friend Joseph Carter, who you may know as the Mink Man. Joseph trains mink to hunt, and he's begun to do the same with raptor, and frankly, with some pretty incredible results. This afternoon, I got to go out with Joseph and raptor and watch him work, and I was blown away by raptor's performance. I feel like Joseph is doing a lot to reveal just how intelligent and trainable these lizards are. But the question remains, is the Argus monitor a good pet? And is it the best pet lizard for you? We normally have five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Today, we're going to be using these five categories to determine our score for the Argus monitor, like always. But at the end, we will add a sixth category, trainability, and Joseph will give us his score. When it comes to handleability, and this isn't very apparent when you watch Raptor here, who's actually pretty spectacular, we give the Argus monitor a score of two out of five. The thing with Argus monitors is that they like food. They don't like food a little bit. They like food like Cookie Monster likes cookies, like Count likes to count, or like Ernie likes his rubber ducky. That means that when you open the enclosure, they are probably going to try to eat you. However, as Joseph will explain later, a powerful feeding response like this can be a big asset when it comes to training. If you're gonna train your Argus monitor to do one thing, be sure to train it to come to a target before it gets fed. I did this with Gus Gus, who also has a powerful feeding response, and it made a huge difference. Should we make a full video on target training in the future? It is probably a pretty important skill. However, that feeding response isn't the only dangerous thing about an Argus monitor. In many ways, they are basically giant Ackies. If they stayed the size that Raptor is now, I would say this is like the perfect sized monitor. But the thing is, as you saw in our earlier video, they get much larger, especially males. Really, my only complaint with Ackies is that they're a bit too small. If this was the size that these stayed, this would be like the perfect size monitor. And the thing about being a very small monitor, like an Aki, is that their bite, their tail whips, and their claws aren't even that big of a deal if they get used on you. Argus monitors are big enough to swallow an Aki whole. That bite, tail, and claws can therefore be pretty darn devastating. One great thing is that like all monitors, that tail, even though it can make a terrible whip, it cannot be dropped. So it does make a decent leash in a pinch. You may see at times I need to catch Raptor here by the tail so he doesn't take a leap of faith off of me or the desk. Built-in leash. In general, a target trained Argus monitor is fairly easy to pick up and move around, but generally you probably aren't going to hold them like you would an Aki or a bearded dragon. And an untrained Argus monitor will probably try to eat your face off. So there's that. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon and also to all of you that have supported us through our Teespring store. Michelle and Will have created some absolutely incredible designs, as well as a few fan designs that we really love. And we're really excited about the shirts that we have to offer. But on top of getting to represent Clint's Reptiles and wear a stinking rad shirt, it also really helps our channel do amazing things and grow. So thank you to all of you who have shirts. Especially thank you to those of you who support us on Patreon. You guys are all awesome. When it comes to care, we give the Argus monitor a score of three out of five. Basically, think of the care for an Aki and then make everything enormous. 
You're gonna need an enclosure with a tremendous amount of ground space. And this means you'll probably need to build it because it needs to be really big. They need deep substrate that will hold a burrow. They're gonna need a hot basking spot. And I mean a really hot basking spot. But that spot can't be too focused. This is a big lizard, not raptor here, but he's gonna get a lot bigger than this. They're a very large lizard, and so it takes a long time to heat that body. And if the light is only hitting in one small spot, they often can get burns, usually about here on their back. And that's from just sitting under that very focused basking light for a long time. So what you need to do is provide a lot of smaller bulbs to distribute that heat over a larger area to avoid burns. I would recommend a bulb that puts out both UVA and UVB, a, a mercury vapor bulb, and not one, but several of those. And make sure that those are too high off the ground for them to reach, which is kind of a bummer because they also need to be low enough to provide a lot of heat. Keep in mind also that Argus monitors are notorious for something called tripoding, which is where they stand on their back legs and use their tail to balance. And I mean, you know, like a velociraptor. And they usually do this to look around, but it's also a very convenient way to stand on top of your basking spot and then bat at the lights and touch them and burn yourself and break the bulbs, all the things that monitors like to do. You're gonna need a fairly large water bowl, but they don't need to be able to swim in it. And this is a big advantage over some other similarly sized monitors like, oh, some of the, the smaller uh, Asian water monitors, like the Dumeril's monitor. These monitors are gonna need an area to swim, probably filtered. These guys, they just need a big water bowl. Good to go. They are gonna eat a lot of animal protein. So you're gonna provide various forms of animal protein to them. This can include insects, lean meats, rodents, birds, just a lot of food. This is an animal with a high metabolism. They eat all meat. And so you don't wanna get them too much fat, but they're gonna to need to eat all the time. The reality is care isn't all that difficult. It's just large, large scale. Everything's big because this is a big lizard and big active lizard. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Argus monitor a score of five out of five. This is a monitor that's going to do well as long as you take proper care of them. One of the most important things about Argus monitors is at least outside of Australia and probably even in Australia, they're all captive bred. And, and so this gives them a huge advantage over farmed monitors like say Savannah monitors, which don't seem to do very well long-term in captivity. They're also from a very harsh environment, which means they've gotta be just tough as nails. One of the biggest risks to them will just be if you don't get their basking spot hot enough for them to properly metabolize their food or if they're fed too high fat of a diet or just fed too often. These guys love to eat, and so they will just eat and eat and eat and eat all day long. Anything that's you know ever roamed the earth, they will try to eat it. And so if you give that to them, they will become obese and die very young. Like I said, Raptor is nowhere near fully grown. He's only about a year old. He'll get way bigger than this. And so we will show quite a few shots of the large adult male so you really know what you're getting yourself into if you decide to get an Argus. When it comes to availability, we give the Argus monitor a score of two out of five. Monitors in general are difficult to breed and they're expensive to breed. Keeping a monitor is just an expensive endeavor. And these guys, they're only available captive bred. So that's the only way to get them. Great Basin Serpentarium has been producing these guys regularly. There are a few other breeders that breed Argus monitors. And online from a breeder, that's gonna be your best bet if you want an Argus monitor. These are gonna be very, very rare at pet stores and they're even uncommon at reptile expos. So online from a breeder, that's where you're gonna go. So there just aren't a lot of people that work with them. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Argus monitor a score of one out of five. The monitor itself won't be cheap, but for a captive bred monitor, they're pretty reasonable. They may actually cost less than an Aki when you go to buy one. The water bowl won't be too expensive. Mercury vapor lights, and you know, you're gonna need several of them. Those aren't gonna be cheap, but it's gonna be the enclosure that's very expensive. It'll be cheaper if you can build it yourself, but it still won't be cheap. And you're gonna need a ton of substrate. Not to mention the amount of space that this will require in your house. So this is a pretty expensive animal to keep. That's just the case for giant monitors. And this is why overall we give the Argus monitor a score of 2.6 out of five. If Ackies are just too small, 
money is just no object, and you're willing to put in a bit of training, then the Argus Monitor might be the perfect pet lizard for you. Which brings us to training. Joseph has been putting an amazing amount of work into this monitor and has seen some frankly incredible results with only more amazing possibilities in the future. And so I'd like to turn the time over to him so he can talk about his experience training Raptor here. Okay, so I am not uh, a very experienced reptile person at all. In fact, I would, I would call myself a complete another novice. I do have a little bit of experience with monitors, but really 99% of my experience has been with him. Um, he has really taught me most of what I know about reptiles and uh, specifically monitors. So I can't really pretend to know a whole lot about the subject. However, the experience I have had with him has been great. And as far as his training, can't compare it to other monitors, because like I said, he is most of my experience uh, when it comes to working with monitors, but I can compare it to other animals. And I would say uh, working with him is very similar to working with a bird of prey that can't fly, essentially. Um, a lot about him reminds me of a bird of prey. Uh, the fact that he's so visual, the way he looks at you, the way he notices um, prey. The interesting though is just like a mink or a dog, he does have that sense of smell, unlike a hawk, which can't detect odors very well at all. He's got that uh, Jacobson's organ, that big old long tongue will poke out and he can smell and detect odors, unlike a bird of prey. But other than that, he relies on his eyesight a lot, just like a bird of prey would. I, I don't know that I can compare their eyesight. Uh, I haven't had him uh, coming from a long distance or noticing things from a long distance, so I can't really say whether he's got that binocular vision of a bird of prey or not. But as far as the way he sees the world, he very much uh, sees it like a human or a bird through his eyes. As far as learning, he gives me the impression that he's more intelligent than a lot of birds of prey. Um, some of the higher end, you know, like Harris hawks and, and such, I would, I would bet are, are quite a bit uh, more clever and, and intelligent. But some of the more simple-minded birds of prey, like the occipiters, the Cooper's hawks and, and the sharp shin hawks, I feel like he's got a significant uh, step up from them when it comes to the speed of him learning a new concept, um, how quickly he picks up uh, trends and, and um, the, the speed at which he picks up routines is far quicker than most birds of prey, especially, especially, especially um, the uh, occipiter world. He really picks things up pretty quick and realizes, oh, hey, um, for example, if you watch that video where we're catching mice, he's a little bit bothered by the water. First, he's intrigued because he sees it move and he thinks, oh, it's something to get. Then he realizes it's not prey and he's kind of disturbed by it. He kind of wants to get away from it. But then very soon thereafter, he notices that mice are coming out where the water's going in and pretty soon you can't get him away from the water. He literally stands and waits for rice to come out of the water. And he figured that all out on his first time out, first time ever you know, seeing mice being flushed with, with water. Whereas a bird of prey would typically take multiple repetitions before they would pick up on things like that. Um, when I first started training him, one of the routines was I would put him down, let him walk around the room, and then I would feed him over by the fireplace. This was not intentional. I was not trying to create a habit, nothing. It just happened to be the place I typically fed him. He very quickly picked up on that and would head over by the fireplace and kind of wait for me to feed him instead of wandering around the room to him as much. Um, and then I changed our, our schedule again. I started feeding him on top of the enclosure where I'd pull him out and there'd be food sitting on top and he'd eat it. And very quickly, he picked up on that. And as soon as I had him picked up out of the enclosure, he'd be looking around on top of his, his cage. Where's the food? Where's the food? And he picked it up with very little repetitions. So I feel, oh, you watching my fingers there? I feel like they're very intelligent for uh, uh, you know, a reptile for sure. But even for some birds, uh, you know, of course not gonna compare to like parrots and, and, and uh, you know, ravens and things like that. But in birds of prey world, definitely, not the bottom of the ring as far as intelligence, probably not the top. I would say somewhere in the middle as far as how quick they learn and how much they seem to perceive and understand what's going on around them. Um, really been enjoyable to work with. Now, the reason I picked this specific species, a lot of people ask me, well, why didn't you pick something different? You know, Asian waters are so much easier to handle and they're so much larger 
you know, people have told me, I, I don't have the experience to say, but that's what they've told me. Others have said, well, why not try, you know, this other species, they've got bigger heads or, or this other species because of this, that, or the other. So the reason I selected this specific species is number one, their prey drive. So a lot of people think of training an animal as, as an intelligence thing. Okay. They're, they're smart. They understand a concept. So they do what you're trying to get them to do. Well, that's part of it. That's definitely a big part of it. In fact, but I say a bigger part is motivation. It doesn't matter as much how intelligent they are as it matters how motivated they are. You can take an animal with a pretty simple mind who's very, very motivated and teach them a task relatively quickly when compared to an animal who has very low motivation, but high level intelligence. In fact, an animal with high level intelligence, but low motivation tends to be the most difficult animal to train. Even though they're super smart, they're not really motivated to do what you want. Maybe they're not super food motivated or they're not motivated by other things that you could reward them with. So they get bored and they want to go do something else rather than learn whatever task you're trying to teach. So having a reasonable amount of intelligence definitely helps, but that motivator is, is key in anything, whether you're training a dog, a mink, a lizard, a bird, that motivator is key. And these guys are one of the most motivated of the, at least what's available in the, in the pet trade of the monitor world. And, and I've seen that with him. He's very, very motivated and it's helped to make him more trainable. And a lot of people may ask, so what are you training him to do? I don't see him being trained to do anything. He's just running and eating a mouse. My lizard does that all the time. I throw a mouse in and he eats it. Well, he, you know, that's great when you're sitting in your bedroom, how are you going to get him back if you're out in, in the big world? And so far, all of my hunting have been in pretty controlled situations because he's still new. He's still learning. He realistically could escape if he wanted to, could head up a tree, down a hole, things like that. And we need to be able to retrieve him um, if he does get startled and head up somewhere where we can't reach him. And so the way to do that is to teach him to come back when we call. And so that's the main training that I've done is, you know, just get him used to handling, which any pet goes through, right? If you're a good pet owner, you're going to at least get your lizard to the point where you can handle him. And then for me, the additional step is teaching him to come when I call. Did you give it a score for trainability one or zero through five? Okay. So trainability compared to what? Cause I haven't had, I don't have monitor experience. Yeah. Just anything. of the, ex okay. of the animals. That I'll say out of birds train. of prey. So out of birds of prey, that'd be a, a comparable cause mink are not very comparable to these guys. Very different dogs aren't comparable to anything. Dogs are only comparable to dogs. So I would say if you're going to compare him to a bird of prey, I would put him like three or four, probably I would say three and a half, give them a three and a half. Uh, there are definitely birds of prey that are, are more clever, pick things up faster and a little easier to work with. But, um, as long as he's not being temperamental, there are times when they go through weird little stages where they're kind of a little temperamental. I would give it a solid three and a half. Joseph, thank you so much for sharing, well, Raptor with us and, and also your experience and your expertise with this incredible lizard. I'm really excited to see what you do in the future. If you don't already follow his YouTube channel, uh, there'll be a link down in the description. Please, please subscribe, click the little bell. I, I imagine there's just gonna be a ton of incredible content about Raptor in the near future. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, you're amazing. I've, I've had some experience with rap, with uh, raptors. <laughs> I've had, had a Velociraptor and Utah Raptor, you know. You're still a high strung fellow, aren't you? That's part of your charm. That's why, that's why I think they got you. Just cause you're ready to go. Can I scoop you up? I'm just getting to know you. Oh, you're a good lizard, hey Raptor. Hi. Looks like I'd prefer to be on your head. Thank you very much. All right, you wanna do that? Go for it. That's my spot of choice right there. Whoa. <laughs> I'll give him just a second to find a new spot. I think he's heading down. He is. I'll get him. You got it? Okay. Yeah, we're, we're figuring each other out. You're doing such a good job, Raptor. Like I said, oh, are we filming? Mm. Raptor, you were a star. I think so. What a great job you did. They like food like Cookie Monster likes cookies. Like Count likes to count. Or like Ernie likes his rubber ducky. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Sesame Street. <laughs>
<laughs> Come on, go for four. Go for four. <laughs> Or like Oscar likes trash. <laughs> <laughs> like Big Bird likes Snuffleupagus. And like Snuffleupagus likes eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs>